Do you have the right amount of exposure to small or micro caps in your portfolio? Our next guest is the editor of Leading Small Caps or Micro Caps Newsletter Under the Radar. He is Richard Hemming and he's here to tell you why you should consider small caps for your portfolio as well as provide some share recommendations. Richard, how are you going? Oh, it's great to be back here, Marty. Always a pleasure to have you here, mate. Uh, first question, tell us a bit about Under the Radar for those that don't know what you guys do. Well, we, we focus on... It's interesting you talk about small caps because we focus on the small cap sort of end of the market. Some people call it micro caps, sort of companies under 300 million. I think uh, small caps is often a misnomer because it's sort of you know, described as the bottom of the ASX 300 when you know, you're talking about the small caps index. Whereas I think that that's kind of like companies that are a bit big. We're, we're looking at companies smaller than that, like smaller than 800 million, 600 million. Mm. So we're looking at ones 300 million. All so, the, so the, 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 the small caps industry or the small ordinaries index or the, or the industry that, that tracks performance has had, a, I guess, a, a pretty um, tough year to date? Yeah, well, I think, um, Marty, I think, I think what you're looking at is a bit of survivor bias as well in that, like, lots of the good small caps that you know, they go up into the, into the upper indices. So I think, like, overall, it has been a tough environment for small caps, but we can always point to small caps that have done really well and um, outperform the index, and that's the you know the volatility of the small cap sector shouldn't should never be underestimated, but it does provide lots of opportunities, and mm -hmm. and I think like if you're looking to invest in the stock market, um, you know if you're reliant on the growth of the overall economy, then I I I, I think you're in for a disappointment, because like in the past few few weeks, forget many bank private. I mean, look at the big mega deals we've seen over offshore. We've seen um, Halliburton buy out um, um, Baker Hughes. That's like a, a $35 billion transaction. We've seen um, uh, two, two farmers get together in a $64 billion transaction. What this is about is consolidation. So there is not much growth in the market, and this is one of the few areas where you can really get the kind of growth that your portfolio needs. Mm. OK, so let's talk about some of the, the stocks you like at the moment. Talk us through some of the investments, why you like them and, and, and why you think well, they're opportunities. Well, I mean, where else in the sec... I mean, like, at the moment, if you, if you want a growth at the bigger end, you're going to have to pay um, 30 to 40 times for certainty of growth. Like, you, you know, you're looking at your REAs, your Seeks, um, Seeks or, <clears throat> or your... Um, uh, you know, even your Ramsey Healthcare. Mm. So at the smaller end, all weather performers, I think Rudy Philip well, like, Van Dyke you know, calls them. It, yeah, all weather. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. You know, <laughs> hopefully, you know, but they don't receive any bumps or any hiccups because we've seen, like, even with Coca-Cola, Cola, we've seen stocks or we've seen stocks really get hit when they're trading on those kind of premium ratios. I mean, that's that's trading momentum. What we're looking at is stocks where the P and the dividend yield are the same. You know. Um, like, say, um, Logic Camps, it's got a, a dividend yield, forecast dividend yield of five times, dividend yield of, um, of, of 11%. I mean, this is just fantastic value. Or IMF, forecast uh, P of around nine times, dividend yield of 6%. So this is a kind of value. And like... Franking with that? Oh, yeah, franking. Well, um, yeah, it, it should be franked, although I would add that with, uh, with Bentham IMF, they're in litigation funding they are growing their US operations at a, at a good rate mm. so I think so weaker currency is good for them well a weaker currency uh, I mean helps them to a degree but not to that big a degree because I think their fu their funding for the US businesses is in the US mm. so I don't think it has that much of an effect on mm. on on those sort of on, okay, so on let, let's focus on a, on, a, on, a, on 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 a stock and we'll see how we go for time and if uh, we get time we'll move to the next one yeah. what are you what, what are you liking at the moment well, there is a little company that's um, on the speculative side that we covered in our last issue, and has had some good. We've had some good yeah. feedback. Osprey Medical. I noticed um, Paul Rick code on that. Uh, I think it's OS um, OS um, OSP. Yep. Um, but like that stock, um, you know, 60 million market cap. But you know, Paul Rickard loves the medical sector, so it must be good. <laughs> but this, this company, like, it, it's very much at the riskier end of the medical sector, so, which is why we're a spec buy. But it produces um, a piece of medical device which is approved in the US, approved in the UK, approved in Australia to um, reduce the amount of contrast or dye that goes into the bloodstream, which when, when people are getting 
heart operations or you know cardi cardiac uh, operations they need this stuff to you know to do x-rays but it just happens to be very poisonous so this this um, technology reduces the amount of um, dye or contrast that goes into the body but the surgeon can still or poison yeah well it, it's it's a well for people with weak kidneys that's the whole point if you've if you're 25 percent of the population that has a weak kidney then it can lead to you know serious consequences like kidney dialysis so basically we're talking about a, a product that saves hospitals thousands of dollars and it's been approved now the thing is it you know they're going for they're doing a 700 patient trial that they're funded for so if the if that trial goes well then they're going to be in a position of being able to advertise the fact that it reduces that incidence of of um kidney kidney failure mm. and that earnings does it have so, earnings does the company have no, earnings it doesn't have earnings no. yet i mean yeah. that's like you know why it's um say, a 60 million market cap company and not yeah. like, you know, one of the companies that we've supported ages ago, like Certex, okay. which, uh, you know, was, Done well. well, it was, you know, six or five dollars when we, when we first looked at it. Now it's twenty five dollars or something. So with these companies, what they, what, what small caps have or what the companies that we like have is a limited kind of fixed cost environment, but a global market. Mm. And you're sort of paying not for the global market because uh, the market for this Osprey Medical is like one point three billion dollars in the US alone. But you're not paying big prices. Mm. And that's what we sort of look for in companies, which is that ultimate leverage, that leverage to, you know, really achieve greatness. And so most of the players that in you're... a commercial sense. Yeah. So <laughs> most of the players that you're a report would uh, uh, would would write about and, and look at or you know that sort of that fall into your investment world are normally what sort of biotech technology no, not really. type companies. Like what I was or... trying to say to you before was the di was the dichotomy of the markets, which is you know people are paying up big time for certainty of earnings for that you know that, I can't remember the rainfall analogy that you the weather thing. But that's Rudy Philip Van Dyke's oh, 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 what a um, genius, yeah. Uh, but, um, term, the all weather performers, he oh, calls them. The all weather performers, yeah, yeah, an right. FN arena. Um, um, euphemism. Yeah, right. Well, um, well, you're paying big money. You're paying up a lot of money for those sort of for those all weather you're performers. Saying they're expensive. And they're, well, they're very expensive if they don't if they don't if there are if there are you know kinks in their armour, they get really badly punished. And I mentioned Coca-Cola, but there is a lot of other stocks that have been punished before, like that um, reject shop. You know, there's, there's. But what we're saying is. At the other end of the spectrum, there are companies like Logicams that are trading at five times 11 per cent you know, yield. Yeah. And these are the sort of stocks that you can find at the value end. And in between that as well, you can find growth companies that do have a lot of risk in them, uh, like Osprey Medical. Mm. So you're looking, you know, you're looking definitely at the riskier end of the spectrum. But like if there is a crash, you'd rather own a stock that's trading on a five times multiple than a 30 times multiple. Mm. Uh, in my opinion. So if you want to know, humble, humble you, you want, to know, want to know more, where do you go? UnderTheRadarReport.com.au Richard Hemming, thanks for your time. Oh, thank you, Marty. After the break, we'll speak